Hello and welcome to another quick quote walkthrough. In this video we'll be going into greater detail about the quoting process. If you'd like more of a quick start guide, check out our general overview video which we'll link in the description. If you don't already own a copy of Quick Quote, head on over to our website www.crystallineonline.com to get a free 30 day trial. So this is the main screen of Quick Quote, and to get started you'll want to select or add a customer using the drop down in the upper left. If you're in a real rush and you don't want to enter the customer's information until you've got a price, you can skip it, but since there are a few ways for customer selection to affect pricing, generally speaking you want to make sure to do this first. The drop down has a list of active customers you can select from, such as the dealers and box stores you work with often. If you're selling through a dealer and need to enter the homeowner's information as well, you can do that under the Ship To tab. Otherwise, if this is a new customer, go ahead and choose Add New to put in their info. The first thing you want to put in is their customer code, which is the customer's unique ID in Quick Quote. This will show up in the drop down to select, and most people use either a short abbreviation of their name or their phone number. Then you've got their full name and address. And you've got their contact information, phone, fax, email, etc. You can enter a list of contact people at this location in the contact field. The rep matches the same field in QuickBooks, so it's typically used for the person in-house. Then you've got any credit terms you want to enter and also a route code if this customer is on a fixed delivery route you want to identify. As mentioned earlier, customers can affect pricing and the two ways they do that are through the default discount and the customer type. The discount is a straight percentage off the total that you see down in the bottom right here. The customer type on the other hand happens invisibly on different sections of pricing. It can be a straight dollar per quantity or a percentage and you can configure different types under the edit button. This way you can have your base pricing be at retail and then have a wholesale customer whose pricing is $10 a square foot less for example. After that all you've got is the tax status and whether or not the customer is active and able to be selected. Again if you have individual homeowner info you can click the ship to tab at the top here to put that in. It does not show up on the standard printout but we can customize printouts to show that for you. Lastly if you have some notes about the quote you can put that under the notes tab at any time too. After you've got your customer sorted, you want to select a product. A product in Quick Quote can be pretty much anything you'd like, but generally speaking it should be a particular brand of material like Corian or Caesar Stone, or a particular category of material like granite and marble. Each product can have different pricing methods, colors, items, etc. so that your solid surface doesn't have to match your stone, and so forth. A product can have multiple colored groups, and those groups can have multiple colors. You can set pricing by the color group, the individual color, or both. So if you don't know the specific color for the job yet, you can select a general color group from the drop down. If you do have a specific color, just hit view color list to bring up the list of colors from which to choose. When you set up your colors, you can split them into stock and non-stock categories in order to make the lists easier to manage. Your popular and live colors can appear right up front here, uh, while dead and otherwise less popular colors show up under the view non-stock colors button. For exceptionally long lists, you can put them all under non-stock, take advantage of the grid's search capabilities. Once you've got a color, next is the default backsplash type. Each splash has a default height, and you can manually change that with this box here. This will automatically fill in some fields for us on our shapes to save some time later. Then it's the default edge profile. You can pick it from the list, or hit view images to actually choose based on a picture. Like the splash, it's going to fill in some stuff on our shapes for us. Next to that is the option to note if the color used for the edge profile differs from the main selection. If you selected a laminate product, you'd also have a drop down to indicate what core material the countertops will use. Once you've got everything all set, it's time to pick a shape. You want to choose the shape that best fits the overall layout of your countertop, and you'll be able to add detail to it as you go. So if it looks more or less like a nail shape, go ahead and pick that one. This brings up the shape window, where you'll enter your dimensions and add details to the drawing. We'll save most of the detail on adding details for another video, but to get started you want to put your dimensions into the boxes on each side of the shape. 
quick quote defaults to inches, but you can change the units for dimensions in the edit company information utility to something else, to like millimeters if you use metric for example. Quick quote prices shapes in rectangular pieces, so you want to make these dimensions the full extents of the shape. If you have bump outs or cutouts, make sure to measure all the way to the furthest edges, that way your waist will be accounted for and your final drawings will be accurate. If you want to price specifically to the final customized shapes area without any waste included, there is a setting in the customized products utility for that. Next you'll notice there's some drop downs on each side of the shape. You can use these to control whether there's a splash on that side, an edge profile, or some other item you've created. Those additional items can have a price per selection, or simply be a label like the wall selection we have here. You can have as many different selections on a given shape as necessary, so if you have a different edge from the default for example, just go ahead and select it. You also have a drop down on each corner so that you can add things like radiuses and miters. Just click the type of modification you want and it will ask for an item code and a dimension. You can have multiple items of the same type so that you can charge more for say a 6 inch radius than a simple eased corner. Those items can also have default dimensions to automatically fill the box. Once one's selected, it will appear in your drop-down for faster repeat selection. Over on the left, we have a list of miscellaneous items that don't draw anything, but still have a cost. Just stick a quantity in the box next to the item to add it. We also have the drawing toolbar to customize your shape with things like sinks, cutouts, and bump outs, and all of those customizations have items attached just like the radius selection. If you have a number of identical versions of this shape on this particular quote, you can enter a quantity in the box in the top left of the shape window. Below that is a color selection drop down that you can use if this countertop's color differs from the one on the main window, and you can have up to three different colors on a given tab. Lastly we have the category selector. Normally different price levels in quick quote are distinguished by the size and or color of the shape. With the category option you can configure distinguishing factors all your own that you can select right here. The categories can even be configured to automatically trigger when a particular item is added to the shape. For example, you can use it to price island countertops differently from normal kitchen tops. You can also use it to create a different price per square foot when a premium edge profile is selected. You could even use it to add a premium for tops that will be an extra hassle, or create a special discounted price level. Once you're done, hit OK and QuickQuote will draw and price your shape. If you have more countertops, just keep adding shapes as necessary. To modify or remove a shape you've already created, you can double click the edge of it in the drawing window or the line item for it in the item list on the right. There are three quick select checkboxes you can use here on the main form to add charges for delivery, template, and install. If you have more services like trip charges and remove and dispose, hit the additional services button to bring those up. Services can be a single charge, a per quantity charge, or automatically tabulated by the area of the countertops, splashes, or both. Next to that we have the non-countertops button. This button allows you to add items to the quote at a price specific to that quote. So if you wanted to give somebody a freebie sync, you can do that here. Just select the type of item, and then the specific item you want. Enter the quantity, and the price it will be on this quote. Then just hit add, and done. Some customers use the non-countertop items to sell sheets of material or to add dollar specific discounts to their quote. Once you've got everything you want, go ahead and save the quote. You can print it at this point as well. To see how it looks before you print, go to File, Print Preview. In the preview screen you can export your printout to a number of formats like PDF if you'd like to email it. Our standard quote printout comes with two pages, one with the drawing and pricing, and one work order style with a bigger version of the drawing. We can custom tailor this printout to remove fields, add pages with legalese, etc. Since customers always want options, QuickQuote gives you a number of ways to provide them with the information they need. To start with, if you switch the product, color, default splash, or default edge selections, QuickQuote will automatically reprice this quote with the new selection. In addition, quotes can have multiple tabs so that you can have multiple products in the same quote, or multiple drawings if you have more than one room. When you go to print, QuickQuote can tally them together for a total or automatically generate pages for each tab. To add a new tab, just hit the new tab button up here. It'll give you the option to copy all items on your current tab to the new one if you'd like to reprice it in a different product, color, etc. If you want to see the total for multiple tabs, just hit the tab tally button down here to choose which tabs you want to combine. Another way to give customer options is to use the option view with this button down at the bottom of your screen. 
You can use it to control what line items appear on the printout by just checking them off. And you can show the customer how the final price would change if they made a different selection, like a different color group. Lastly, we have the multi-quote option up here that will automatically generate a side-by-side -side list of pricing in each color group in this product. If you need to replicate this exact quote for another customer or job, you can do that by going to File, Save as New, and QuickQuote will copy this quote to a new quote number for you. And to open your previously saved quotes later to view or edit them, just go to File, Open. So that's a look at some of the things you can do with your quotes in QuickQuote. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again in a future video.